<laughs> we are at Arizona Barbecue. This, this we're at heaven. We I don't know what I did, but I got here. And so we've been smelling it, and then they brought us a plate. Oh my gosh! Okay, so this You're is what's to watch called, me for a whole episode. I'm gonna do nothing but eat corn. They they let us do uh, wake ups here, so we're so thankful. And uh, this is called the Superstition Platter Brisket. It actually has ribs, brisket, pulled pork, green chili mac and cheese, and what he's gnawing on, the chili lime roasted corn. This is a really nice. This is good. We'll be right back. So if you're ever in uh, Arizona, come out, go, go to Gilbert. Arizona Barbecue, that's the place to be. Good morning and welcome to Wake Up. Wait, we wake up? I, I wish I had the resolve. I'll do a whole episode. How was that corn? That. Oh, it's epic. Really? Mm-hmm. It's so good. Mm. Oh, my God. <laughs> but it's so good to have you with us it this is. morning. Good morning. Welcome and, to Wake uh, Up. Don't forget to like it, share it, subscribe. If you're a new subscriber, type in the comments where you're from. And, it's bar- and I have to be careful because um, homecoming, I learned, uh, don't ever get ribs young adults. Don't get ribs on a homecoming date. Okay, why? Because I noticed as we were driving back to the place, I had barbecue sauce down the sleeves of both of my shirts. <laughs> and what's weird about that is we only had one date. We never got the second date. No? No, me and Michelle never got the second date. That was the, that was the, the deal breaker. The barbecue sauce might have been, the, I don't know. But really, that's good because you found the love of your life later in life. And the I, barbecue sauce saved you from oh, the wrong person. The barbecue sauce was powerful. It did. It saved him. It put me in the right place at the right God's time. Plan. Thank you, God. <laughs> anyway, your sermon this weekend was epic and amazing. And don't forget to like, share, subscribe our thing if Thank we haven't you. said that yet. Thank you. But, um, Jeremiah thirty-one fourteen. that's where we're going to be today. Um, I will satisfy the priests with abundance. And that's what I have right now. I didn't have this earlier, but God brought me an abundance. And I am now satisfied. That's true. That's more than you can I contain. could contain. I can't eat all that. I'm going to try to contain it, but I believe it is more than I can contain. There may be overflow. There will be overflow. <laughs> and, and so then it goes on to say, and my people, this is what God's up to. He's, he's talking, the whole passage about Christ is coming, right? The Messiah is coming. He's going to change everything. He's going to renew everything. He can forgive everything, redeem everything. And so well, here's what God's up to when he brings Jesus into your life, right? You receive Jesus, now this is what he's up to. He says, I will, I, sometimes we're like, well, what is the will of God? Well, here's a will. I will okay. satisfy the priests with barely enough. Just enough, just get by. Actually, a little less than what they need so that they might learn. That way they're all in hunger and they get humble. They can really learn. And here's that. what he's going to do is he's going to take away the little that you have. That's right. And punish you. <laughs> I will satisfy the priest with abundance. Well, the priest isn't just like your pastor of your church or something. The priest is all of us. Right. Jesus is our high priest, but we're a royal priesthood. We're like, well, I ain't no priest, right? People do that. Well, I ain't no saint. Actually, the Bible says you are a priest and you are a saint. Right. Are you joking, pastor? Me? Do you have any idea how I live? Your priesthood and your saintness, is that a word? Saintness? No, I am. My saintness. If you, and I have a saint meter at my house. And yeah. my Satanist is about, I'm at like a 9.3. For some reason, when you say Satanist, it sounds like Satanist. <laughs> like, I keep hearing Satan. <laughs> I'm saying Saint. Yeah, I'm Satanist. <laughs> oh my gosh. Please don't say Satanist ever again. <laughs> so, you're, you are. Yeah, it's, the rumor's going to get out there. Yeah, it's got the Satanist. I know that you and other people don't see you as a priest or a saint, right. but God does. Because he sees you finished. He sees, he sees your sin no more. Corinthians talked about it. He says, I, I see your, your sin no more. I see yeah. none of your sin. Yeah. He sees you perfect and without blemish and exactly the way that Jesus made you perfect. And, and so what's he trying to do? Leave you in need or is he trying to satisfy you? And I think that's important that you realize that God's trying to lead you to abundance. He's trying to, you think about even with Israel, what, what, the whole goal of Israel was God was leading them to a land that was, had nothing. Flowing with milk and honey. He's like, I'm going to lead you to a land of desert. Yeah. I'm leading you to Ari- uh, Yuma, Arizona. You know, he, he, does, he does leave the desert part out of the conversation. Right. <laughs> even when they got to Egypt, hey, we're going to get you out of slavery and I'm taking you to a land flowing with milk and honey. You're right. He left out the middle. <laughs> because he's leading them. But we're going them. through a desert to get there. <laughs> right. And sometimes the desert though. Yeah, it discourages us. They got discouraged and they didn't get into the land. Mm-hmm. Not because it wasn't available. Not because God didn't give it. 
Not because God didn't go before them and, and make fight a way on their behalf, but instead because they were like, they're too big. We can't do it. Right. Because they didn't believe that God was able to do it. And sometimes we hear people say, well, I don't know if it's the will of the Lord for me to have, uh, you know, wealth or have right. abundance in my life. And you go, well, you know, let's not try and second guess the Bible. Right. So the scripture says, I will satisfy the priests with abundance, comma, and my people will be filled with my bounty. I, I think of this as bounty. This is, this is a bounty. And he's going to fill you. When it says fill, just, you know, when God fills you with something. It, he doesn't just do a, right, it, just a it's little like bit. a little bottom of the cup. Right. It's, 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 boom, it's all the way to the it's top. Filled. It's that annoying. Yeah. And, it's, you know, it's what you come expecting. I remember we were up, remember the, the cabin we used to go up to um, up north, right? And uh, Peyton was about three years old. And um, I was, you know, we didn't, we don't do a lot of soda with my wife. She's not a big soda person. So I'd gotten Orange Crush. Oh, you have to sneak it. I snuck the Orange Crush nice. in. She was wherever. And so I said, kids, dad's got Orange Crush. All you go get a cup. Well, the easy cup was, they had the little Dixie cups in the, in the house by the fridge. Yeah. So my older boys all grabbed the little Dixie cup, and they were right there with the little Dixie cup. But they were, Peyton, he's like, come in, Dad, and you're, ah, bah, bah. and he comes in, and all the other kids, I filled up, and it, it was a great lesson, because they were sitting there with their cup, I gave it, and then here came Peyton. He had found himself a massive, it was like a vase. And I wanted to give an illustration of God's goodness oh to my, my kids. Gosh, this so is I gave so the smart. kids a little one, and then I poured Peyton's all the way and they're full. Like, and they're like, well, Dad, I'm like, well, whatever you come expecting is what you get. Peyton wow. came expecting Just an abundance. Enough, yeah, so what do you little expect little out of your day? Yeah, your expectation. What did Joshua expect? And your, Caleb. Wow. Jason, Joshua and Caleb have an expectation. Right. And their expectation is what got them into the abundance in their life. And, and, and the expectation of the other 10 spies took the, and their bad report took the whole entire rest of them. And that's the thing you have to 40 realize. 40 years into lack, 40 years into the wilderness. God, and you God, can live your Christianity that way, huh? Of course you can. And you have to realize that God sometimes gives people a great God idea. And you go share it to people and like, oh, that'll never work. That'll that, never happen. That's so true. It's got a knife company. You don't even know anything about knives. Yeah, what do you know would, about knives? Do you know, where are you even going to get knives? I would never sell. Do you know how many knife companies there are out there? Yeah. And people, this is what... People tend to do. Yeah. And you have to go, yeah, but God gave me this idea. God, I'm just going to do what God says. You're going to write a book? What it, who's going to read your book? Yeah. And sometimes even it's our own mind saying these things to us. And that's one of the things that I really tried to cover is that God gives seed to the sower. And certainly we sow into the kingdom of God. But are we also taking from the abundance that he's given us and wow. preparing the next season? So a farmer, he has an abundant harvest. He takes 20% of his seed, right. puts it aside in the barn, gives his 10%, of course, his first to God. That's the right thing to do because right. it still belongs to God. And that 20% sits in the barn. He doesn't eat it. He doesn't buy a car with it. He doesn't uh, spend it on an expensive vacation. He just leaves it in the barn because he knows he has to plant that next season. Right. If he doesn't plant it in the next season, he won't have food the next year. And we can learn from this, uh, you know, that's what I talked about was the Joseph principles that you got to set aside 20%. Right. And in those big, prosperous years, when that abundance... See, think you might go, well, my abundance hasn't come to me yet. Right. Well, I like that, that you said yet, because abundance is coming. Right. This is a promise from God. It's coming like a tidal wave into your life. But are we going to handle it well when it gets to us? Because Egypt had a choice. They could either eat all their abundance and have seven great years and then be destroyed in the seven years of famine, or they could set aside 20%. They could be good with their money, right? Right. I think sometimes we get a raise, oh. right? We get a bonus, we get some extra money, and boom, it's gone. We, we get it right back to the world. We don't even remember where it went. Because our mind goes, oh my gosh, you know what I could do is I could finance a car for seven years and I could get a better blah, 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 blah. It's so true. And that's the world system, and, and Satan's good at tempting us, and I've done it. Believe me. I have to. And you know what? I think one of the but, biggest changes for me and Holly was is when I said, no more debt. So we said, all right, we're just going to drive our cars yeah. until we pay off our cars. Yes. Right? And, you know, you're year five into this six-year thing, and you're like, well, he's a little old, but he still runs good. He's you know, still going. It's an interesting thing because you're like, well, you start to worry about the miles. Well, the miles are going to get so high, it's probably going to break. I better trade it in. Like, Trust God. Mine did. It never broke. My car's still going, and it shouldn't be. <laughs> There's lights and bells and whistles going off in that thing, but praise God, she's paid for. <laughs> You know, you don't have to uh, try and live like the world. 
Yes. Instead, be smart and, and do like Joseph taught us, set aside, you did, and yeah. now the reason you have a knife company is because you put seed aside. I did, I spent a season, we put a season putting seed aside. And putting that in and the I, ground and in and terms of a I knife company. And here's what I love is, you know, you hear, well, recession's coming, this is coming, but in the middle of poverty, they still had great wealth. Oh, yeah. In the, in the season of, of, of famine, they still had great wealth. And you can Google this research, and we'll kind of close with this, is, is that uh, wealthy people get wealthier during seasons of famine. Right. And that's what Joseph, the, the Joseph principle was, was that during the time of prosperity, yeah, they were fruitful. Right. But during the season of famine, they multiplied. Wow. They were able to feed, not only feed and save the rest of the world, but gather up a tremendous amount of land. And wealth. And, and wealth. And, and so uh, it's, just a, it's just a great principle that we could learn from the Bible on how to be good with the abundance God's about to bring into your life. The good news is the abundance is coming. The wisdom is we're going to never eat corn like this again because I am literally threw up in my mouth just now. Just Done. a little bit. And you probably did. Just turn it off. Done. Just turn it off. There's nothing Done. left to watch here. That's how I eat corn. Let's, Let's pray, pray over the day. Father God, I thank you and praise you, Lord, uh, that, that uh, you've got wealth and abundance coming into our lives. It's your will. It's coming. And Lord, we just believe you and we know it's coming. Whatever we currently have, that more is on the way. And Lord, that you would give us the insight and the principle to live right to have good standards and good stewardship over what you place in our hands that we might be faithful father god with the money that you've entrusted to us and father god that we could multiply that you would send forth your reign and multiply that which we set aside and place in the earth in jesus name and everybody said amen, amen. amen. watch this clip today the healer is here i said today the healer is here. He is. Two or more gathered, there I am. You brought him with you to church. And he's here today. And the, one of Satan's favorite and worst at, attacks is imprisoning us in our health. Make us sick, give us pain, give us a disease, get a bad report from the doctor, and we can't get up, we don't have energy. It's tough to run our race when we're in pain. The CDC reports that 133 million Americans suffer from chronic disease. That's 40% of our population. And that another 20% are suffering from chronic pain. But Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 4 says, Surely he took up our pain. It's talking about Jesus. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering. He, he carried the pain for you. Our Jesus doesn't want you to have to live life in pain anymore. He doesn't want you to have to live life with a disease or a sickness, imprisoned, controlled by allergies or, or that diagnosis. He doesn't want you to have to be controlled by pills and treatments. That's not what Jesus best is for us. He carried our pain. He already had it. He, you don't have to carry You don't have to carry it. You can just give it to him because he bore it. When the Israelites came out of Egypt, the Bible says that there were none feeble among them. 600,000 men plus women and children, none feeble among them. That's, that shows you a picture of God's will for us as a community of believers. His will and desires that there'd be none feeble among us. All of us in the army of God, all of us equipped and ready and able to handle every circumstance that comes our way. That we might be able to march boldly into battle with full energy and strength, not imprisoned by any sickness at all. That's his will for our lives. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 5 kind of goes on to say, But he was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. By his stripes, we, not we were healed, not we will be healed, not we could be healed, the decision for your healing was made 2,000 years ago when Jesus died. God already decided that you would be healed. He already made that. You're not asking God, God, will you heal me? No, no, the decision was already made. You are healed. And that are healed has right now implications in your life. We're healed might mean before and will be healed might be some time in the future, but are healed 
has a right now implication. That whatever Jesus did 2,000 years ago, every single moment of your life, you are healed. It's for this moment. It might be that you were sick yesterday. You might have had it for 12 years. But right now, in this moment, if you'll reach out and receive the touch from the Savior, Jesus Christ, you are healed. You don't have to be sick one more day of your life. Arthritis can get out of this place. It has no bearing on your body to bring you pain anymore. It has to get out. Cancer has to get out of this place. Jesus stood over Peter's mother-in-law and rebuked Fever. He said, get out, fever. Like, share, subscribe. And uh, go down to Arizona Barbecue. Yeah. And then uh, actually so on, on the weekend, go to church. Yeah. And then after church, go to Arizona Barbecue. Arizona Barbecue. Closed on Sunday. So I love it. I love that they're closed on so Sunday. So come down to Arizona Barbecue and then knock on the door and then go to, I'll go to Chick-fil-A then. They're closed on Sunday too. I love that those places are closed on Sunday. You know I never said? get more hungry for Chick-fil-A than on Sundays. It was so funny. And we always, my family always goes, I always want what I can't have. Savvy always goes, Chick-fil-A. And then we're like, well, it's closed on Sunday. She's like, why would they be closed on Sundays? It's God's day. She's like, well, God wants to eat <laughs> on Sundays. Do you know that Chick-fil-A, they say in the six days they're open, now they're doing more than McDonald's is on seven days. Wow. That's a God principle. That's incredible. You go there. We went there uh, Friday night at like nine o'clock at night. There must have been 700 cars in the drive-thru. Right. It was just unreasonable. Yeah. But I still waited. It's the waffle fries. Anyway, me and God's house this weekend. Be blessed. Come here on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Saturday. See you guys.